here, and I am dressed in white, wearing my fancy crown, and about to light my candle to start our session today because we are going to be talking about Christ the King Sunday. Now you may ask, why the crown? Why the white? White is representing the reign of Christ, and the candle is here to tell us that it's a good reminder to let us know that Jesus is our king and our leader. And I want you to take a breath. Get ready to have some wonderful learning time together. Now I have to ask you, what do you think it means to treat someone royally? I think of royalty with the crown and the fancy jewels and the big castles, but that doesn't necessarily mean that that's how you treat someone royally. That's royalty. Here's the difference. Um, have you ever felt you were being treated royally? Like you were being treated like a king or a queen? I want you to think about times where you really felt that you were being treated royally. Because as we listen to our story today and um, read our passage from the Bible, we are going to be taking things from Matthew, the book of Matthew, again. And um, I want you to listen to the words that are going to be said in these passages. And then we're going to watch a little video about kind of how it might make more sense. So let's start with listening to the passages from Matthew 25, which talks about our Christ the King. I'm going to take this off as we're talking. It's a little tight around my head because it is actually my daughter's and not mine. So as we're um, sitting around, make sure you have a wonderful space and place to listen. And I'm going to read this part to you. It says, When the Son of Man comes in his glory with all of his angels, he will sit on his royal throne. The people of all nations will be brought before him, and he will separate them as shepherds would separate their sheep from their goats. He will place the sheep on the right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, My father has blessed you. Come and receive the kingdom that was prepared for you before the world was created. When I was hungry, you gave me something to eat. When I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. When I was a stranger, you welcomed me. And when I was naked, you gave me clothes to wear. And when I was sick, you took care of me. And when I was in jail, you visited me. Then the ones who pleased the Lord would ask, When did we give you something to eat or drink? When did we welcome you as a stranger, or give you clothes to wear, or visit you when you were sick or in jail? Then the king would answer, Whenever you did that for my people, no matter how important they seemed, you did it for me. Then the king will say to those on his left, Get away from me. You are under God's curse. Go into the everlasting fire. I was hungry, but you did not give me anything to eat. And when I was thirsty, you did not give me anything to drink. I was a stranger, but you did not welcome me. And I was naked, and you did not give me clothes to wear. And I was sick and in jail, but you did not take care of me. Then the people will ask, Lord, when did we fail to help you? Or when were you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or sick or in jail? And the king will say to them, Whenever you failed to help any of my people, no matter how unimportant they seem, you failed to do it for me. Now, I, it seems like that is a really uh, kind of a lot to take in. And that's okay. Um, I want to show you the video 
that I found that I think help explain a lot about the sheep and the goats and what that means to us. So let's take a listen and I hope you enjoy this really cool video that I saw and we'll talk about it afterwards. Jesus often taught with parables. Those are stories that teach us something about ourselves, like the parable of the sheep and the goats. I don't get it. What do sheep and goats have to do with us? Well, it might help if you understand more about them. First, take sheep. Sheep can't really live on their own. They need a shepherd, and they know how much they need him. So they follow the shepherd closely, and they do what the shepherd says to do. Aww, cute little sheep. Right. Then you have the goats. Goats are stubborn. They do things their own way. They eat anything, even trash. They don't know how much they need the shepherd, so they don't always follow him. Bad, bad goats. Exactly. So Jesus tells about a king who went away, but then the king comes back in glory with all the angels to sit on his throne. Like Jesus. Jesus is coming back. Right. Jesus was telling a true story about himself. He is coming back. And when he does, he will separate people like a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. Some people will go on his right. Those people are like good sheep? Yes. Jesus will say to the people on his right, Hey, I know you. Come into my kingdom. When I was hungry, you fed me. When I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. And when I was a stranger, you invited me into your home. When I was in prison, you visited me. Wow, they've been busy. When did they do all those things? Jesus said when they did those things for the least of these, they were actually doing it for him. Wait, the least of these? What's that supposed to mean? It means everyone matters to God, and their needs matter to him too, even if they can't do anything for you in return or even pay you back. So helping them is like helping Jesus in the skies? Yep, exactly. Then Jesus will talk to the people on his left. Jesus will tell them to go away. Because when he was hungry, they didn't feed him. And when he was thirsty, they didn't give him anything to drink. And when he needed a place to stay, they didn't invite him in. And when he was in prison, they didn't visit. Wait, why would anyone not help Jesus? Hey, I think I see where this is going. Does that mean those people on Jesus' left didn't help others who couldn't pay them back? They probably did things their own way, like goats. Right! Jesus said when they ignored the needs of the least of these, They ignored him. So if we want to do something great for Jesus, We should do something great for people in need and care for them like Jesus does. After all, he's the shepherd. I'm the sheep. 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 Wasn't it a cool video? Just like last week when we said that the parables are stories, and sometimes in these parables, what they talk about isn't necessarily exactly what they mean. For instance, the sheep and the goats. I think that they are talking about the sheep being people who are willing to help, willing to follow, willing to do their best and be their best um, for others and for God. And the goats were the ones that are like, meh, I'm just going to do what I'm going to do. And I don't care about anybody else because what I know is best and I don't need anybody's help. Have you ever met people like that? I have. It's kind of difficult. Sometimes it's really hard to be able to get through to them, um, to show them how much it's important to help and to be kind and that it's not just about you, right? Like sometimes it's hard to think that, but it is really important for ourselves to know that being important is not as great as making others feel important. And I think with what Jesus is trying to tell us is that when you do the right thing, when you see 
you know, a brother or sister or somebody who's really just sad and you can just see by the look on their face, would you just walk past and go, ugh, this again? Or would you say, do you want to talk? Can I give you a hug? Can I be there for you? That's so important. Um, another way that you can help people is by just the simple things that we do in our community. In our church community, we have this really cool pantry that's outside of the building. And anyone is welcome to donate whatever they want in there. And anyone else is more than welcome to come in and take what they need. Because that's a way that you can help. Um, another way that you could help people is just telling them that you're there. Telling them that you love them and that they are important to you. Um, just like in the reading of Matthew, Jesus said, Oh, when you helped me when I was sick, you helped my friends and my people when they were hungry, you gave them clothes off their back. All of these things are things that we can do and we can live in our lives every day. Um, even though we're not all together in person, there's ways to help. I go and donate old clothes and toys to shelters and to people who really need it. Like I said, we have the pantry. I want you to think of what are ways that you can help? What are ways that you can make people feel important? Like they matter. Because everyone matters. And it's really, really a great message to send out. So you can treat somebody royally. Just like we had learned in our story. So as we end our time today, I'd like us to bow our heads. And I'm going to use my praying hands this way today. So if you can repeat after me. Glorious Lord, your love and mercy are more than I can perceive. Open my heart to your care to treat others as honored children of God. Amen. I hope you have a wonderful week and I can't wait to spend more virtual time with you again. Take care. Hi, we friends. I have this really awesome song for us to share today, and it is called Give Me Joy in My Heart. I'm going to sing the whole thing through for you, and um, I hope you want to sing along once you get used to the words, and it sounds like this. Give me joy in my heart. Keep me singing. Give me joy in my heart, I pray. Hallelujah, give me joy in my heart. Keep me singing. Keep me singing till the break of day. Sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna. Sing Hosanna to the King of Kings. Sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna. Sing Hosanna to the King. That's how the whole song goes. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use some of the motions that we do for the word joy. Remember how we do a big smile on our face? And then heart is going to be another one that I'm going to say, give me joy in my heart. And when it says sing or singing, I'm going to go like this, like this. Okay, so singing. So it's like we're going whoop with our hands to pretend like we're using our hands to show that we're singing, okay? So here it goes. Give me joy in my heart, keep me singing. Give me joy in my heart, I pray. Hallelujah, give me joy in my heart, keep me singing. Keep me singing till the break of day. Sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna to the King of Kings. Sing Hosanna.
Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna to the King. I hope you can practice along with the motions or without the motions, whatever you feel like doing. Or you can even just do the motions while you hear Miss Chris sing. It's whatever you feel like doing, but hopefully you want to keep singing too. Thanks, friends, for listening to our new song this week. Bye.